Patch 14.17 has brought some significant shifts in the meta, with new compositions evolving every day. As a challenger player, it's crucial to stay updated with all these meta comps. We've previously posted a video showcasing the top meta comps to try out in this patch. If you missed it, make sure to check it out. There's a link in the description below. In today's video, I'll be analyzing one of my recent gameplay sessions featuring a dominating and trending meta reroll comp. Can this comp hold its ground against the 10 portals meta? Watch the full video to find out. The game kicked off with the gold opener portal. Right now, shapeshifters with Nomzi and Twitch reroll are dominating the meta. I was fortunate to get an early swain in this game. However, during the first augment selection, one of my opponents picked a shapeshifter crest, clearly signaling competition for the Nomzi reroll. I chose Unified Resistance as my first augment. Normally, I prefer item-based or economy-based augments early on, but we don't always get what we want, such as the nature of the game. I started with the Eldritch Shapeshifter opener. After losing the first battle to my competitor, I decided to go on a losing streak while maintaining my economy. I also made sure not to give away any free bows in the carousel. After getting a Cassiopeia, I planned to build around her with Shapeshifters, using Briar as the frontline carry and adding Karma later for encounter synergy. One of my opponents already had a 2-star Vigo which is another meta-dominating comp. I lost the second stage completely, maintaining a 5-loss streak. Then, I equipped a Gargoyle Stoneplate on Swain and a Hextech and Rageblade on Cassiopeia. For my second augment, I picked Ascension, another combat-based augment. At level 6, I activated 4 Shapeshifters and rerolled for Cassiopeia copies. Most of my units became 2-star. I broke my 6-loss streak against the opponent who started it. I stacked 50 gold and rolled with the excess. An early karma appeared appeared in the shop, and my win streak continued to grow. I equipped another Rage Blade on Cassiopeia from the items in the monster round. By the 4 to 1 round, I had maxed out Cassiopeia. One of my opponents was aiming for 10 portals with an emblem already available. For my third augment, I picked Long Distance Pals, aiming to pair Briar with Cassiopeia. To maintain my win streak, I moved to level 7. One of my opponents had already completed 9 Frost Synergy, showcasing how competitive challenger lobbies can be. I won a very close encounter that could have ended my streak, with Cassiopeia dealing 16k damage. Her damage was impressive every round. From the 4 to 4 carousel, I picked a belt and crafted Warmog's armor for Swain. At level 8, I rolled for other shapeshifter units. With Nasus showing up, I activated 6 shapeshifter synergy and equipped a protector's vow as Swain's third item. I won a close battle against the portal opponent. A briar showed up in the 5 to 4 carousel but only with a sugarcraft emblem. Then I lost my 12 win streak to the same opponent who started it. This just goes to show that life is a cycle, and karma is a boomerang. Never mind! With Cassiopeia's dominance, I comfortably made it to the top 4. After the monster round, I picked the Tinker Charm and used the Reforger on the Sugarcraft Emblem, which fortunately turned into the Eldritch Emblem. I equipped Sterix Gauge on Briar and activated the Eldritch Synergy. With more HP, I fed Briar every round, boosting his HP further. A close encounter with the portal opponent resulted in another loss. I picked the Conjure Artifact Charm and moved to level 9. From the Artifact Anvil, I picked the Suspicious Trench Coat and equipped it with Briar. I lost another round against the Dragon Shapeshifter board dropping my HP to 15. From here, it was all about positioning and selecting the right charms. I picked another Sterix gauge for Briar from the 6 to 4 carousel. At one point, I sold my Swain to 2 star Briar, which I finally did. I then transferred the tank items to Nasus. Briar topped the damage board, dealing 14k damage. With both Briar and Cassiopeia's dominance, I 
I eliminated the dragon opponent, leaving just one more opponent. As I mentioned earlier, charms are crucial at this stage. For the final battle, I summoned a dragon using a charm, but my opponent had already activated 10 portals. I positioned Briar to take down the opponent's units as quickly as possible. After a fierce battle, I emerged as the winner against the 10 portal comp, thanks to Briar's dominating performance. Flexibility in the final stages and precise positioning are key to distinguishing yourself from an average player in these challenger lobbies. That wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Share your thoughts in the comments below. For more exciting challenger content, subscribe to our channel, Item Swap.